This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exact set for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Hello, Internet! My name is Tipsy Villain because I like to consume adult beverages and then play video games, and welcome to part one of the Stanley Parable. Uh, originally released a couple years back as a Half-Life 2 mod, it was recently re-released um, in HD. Um, the release features uh, more stuffs to do, in addition to increased gra um, increased better graphics. <laughs> but you know what I'm trying to say. And yes, uh, the main mechanic is the narrator, whom you can choose to obey or not to obey, and that affects what happens in the story. It's very much a game about gaming. If you cannot guess from the intro, you have a voice in your ear telling you what to do. Um, like Stanley, what buttons to push, and then you push them. And very rarely do you have the option to not push them. Hmm. Right now, I'm going to explore the option of simply not leaving my office. The narrator is telling me to leave my office, but I would rather honestly not. Can I sharpen my pencils? What can I interact with? Is this like Stanley just standing around touching every single thing in the room? Can I call someone? Can I hide under the desk? I can't jump. I know I can't jump. There's even an achievement saying I can't jump. Can I close the office door? Yep. Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed. Then days. Had years gone by? <laughs> he no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. <laughs> oh, and now we died. Okay, that was awesome. Thank you so much for watching. My name is okay. Now, um, we're gonna we'll try again this time. Yeah, see, when you die, <laughs> um, you go start back at the beginning. The end is never the end. Um, this time, why don't we not sit around? Why don't we actually follow the narrator? Already, this was uncomfortable. And Stanley decided that as soon as he found a new space he felt safe in, that he would never leave it again in his life. 
It's reacting to the fact that I, <laughs> um, I, I, I left in it. It changes what happens. Okay. I think there's an achievement if you try this door five times. Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the <laughs> achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. <laughs> Come on, give me the award. Give me the award. Two, three. Hmm. I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 oh clicks will do it. Fuck yes, you, almost man. Almost certainly 50 clicks. <laughs> do I just have to keep standing here and clicking? Okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm still not feeling it. I, I want this achievement to have meant something. It has to be a, a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see some hustle, Stanley. <laughs> I want to see commitment, a willingness to go all the way, no matter what the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? Can I? No, I want this one. Where is 417? Okay. Where is 417? No. 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 I won't. I want it! <laughs> okay, fine. Where's 417? I'll go to 417. Show me 417! Where is it, you jerks? Where is it? There it is! <laughs> you will give me that achievement! Ooh, great! Now, go click a few times on door 437. Where's 437? <laughs> <laughs> it's four two eight I don't think four three seven there we go <laughs> excellent I think we're getting somewhere now door four one five let's give it ten clicks or so yes yes I will <laughs> this is awesome I love this game <laughs> Now, back to door number 437. Okay! I'll do it! I'll do anything for you, Mr. Narrator Man! 437, 437, 427, 437. There it is. Let's see. How about you click on, well, I don't know, the copy machine? Where is the copy machine? I, I can't see it. Where is the copy machine? Okay. Seriously, guys, where's the copy machine? Copy, not coffee. I don't see it. I don't see it. Where is the copy machine? Nope, it's not over there. No, those are the doors of choice. I know something of what I'm getting into. Where is the copy machine? Where is the copy machine? Where is the copy machine? What? What's this? Huh, okay, I guess that's probably nothing important. Probably, maybe. Huh. Computers are acting weird. Where's the copy machine? Where's the copy machine? Where's the copy machine? That's uh, my door. Where's the fucking- Oh, there it is. All right, back to room 417. I'm really feeling yes. it now. I think we're getting somewhere. Yes! 417! 417! Here I come, bitch! Okay, now go <laughs> climb on employee 419's desk. Okay! Is this it? Yes! This is great! You're putting it all on the line, Stanley. I like that. All right, let's keep it up. Go give me a few clicks on door 416. Yes, I will, Master! Yes, I will! Where's 416? Ah, that's... <laughs> Can I climb on all the desks? Oh my god! 417, 416. Yes! We've almost got it! <laughs> now the copy machine yes! does that one again! Yes! I will! I will! Come here, Mr. Copy Machine! <laughs> yes! 
Yes! Finish it off, Stanley! Five clicks on door! Four, three, four. Yeah! Yes! We did it! Oh, wow. That felt amazing. <laughs> oh, you really earned it, Stanley. Nothing could hold you back. Yes, I'm very proud of how far we've come today. Just think, only a few minutes ago, you believed an achievement was worth five little clicks. Really, now? What were you thinking? Yes, I did it! I did it! Best achievement ever, you guys! Okay. Okay. Now what else? I could climb on that one guy's desk. Can I climb out the windows? Okay. Can I climb on other people's desks? <laughs> oh, that was amazing! You guys, that was amazing. I can turn off all the computers! Yes! Guys, do you want to leave your computers on? That'll make them freeze! <laughs> oh god, look at that painting. That is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. I know, I've heard you could climb out of one of the windows, but... Uh, best achievement I've ever unlocked! Okay. Ah, uh, yes. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Ah, oh, I don't know, guys. I don't know. Well, we've been following his instructions so well so far, let's just keep on following them. We'll disobey next time. Where is everybody? Yet, there was not a single Tips person one. here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Alright, sure thing, pal. What? Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around <laughs> and got back on track. I did not actually expect that door to open. Is there something I can do in here? There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path <laughs> to follow. Just an empty broom closet. Are you no sure? No reason to still be here. Are you sure? Oh my god. Haha, <laughs> I won't leave! It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, He's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> what? His... Ah, oh, sweet fuck all. You're a jerk, Mr. Nary. Are you, are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? I won't leave! Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. Uh, I want to see if something will happen. I want to see if you'll do or say something. I love you, Mr. Nary, man. Realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally <laughs> this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I don't believe I never you! Would have thought to mention it. I don't believe you! There is a significance to this closet! Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe, when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. <laughs> I hope your friends find this concerning. I'm so glad I turned on the subtitles. Oh, that was awesome. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. <laughs> he probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes, I am! I'll give- Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here, when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. That's true. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. 
he or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Can I seriously end it in here? Is there an ending? Is there a broom closet ending? <laughs> Oh, I don't think he's gonna say anything else. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Okay. Ah, second player. <laughs> it's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. You know what? Uh, second player here isn't being qu feeling quite so obedient and doesn't care about achievements. So second player is gonna go downstairs. Fuck you, man. Fuck you, Mr. Narrator Man! <laughs> but Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. It's true. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his Back. feet when he looked down? <gasps> what? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeated? Yes! No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, <gasps> an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. <laughs> so, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the Awesome! Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. Awesome! It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. <laughs> I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And Pretty wild. he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake mm. right now as he's ever been in his life. Irony! Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was, in fact, a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all yeah, that? Yeah, voice! And this voice was a part of himself, too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. Coffee. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back. 
the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Oh, no. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must oh, be no. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Oh, jeez! <laughs> this is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. Oh, jeez. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. Normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. Do it you? was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. Fuck you, Mariella! And then she turned and ran. Oh, okay. Well, that didn't end well for us. Oh, jeez. He realized his life were a video game and went insane. And now we're back! Okay, you know what? I'm going to save it, uh, here. Uh, <laughs> wow. It was a bit disheartening, but still pretty awesome as a game. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. My name is Tipsy Villain, and this was The Stanley Parable. If you want to check out the game for yourself, download it in the description below, as are links if you'd like to like me on Facebook or follow me on Twitter. If you liked what you saw, click like or subscribe, and be sure to tell all your friends about me on your social media account. If you didn't like what you saw, tell no one. Bye!